Hey, it's Mr. Luneski. Uh, it's our last video for Unit 9 on quadrilaterals. Uh, we're looking at trapezoids and kites today. Uh, so we're going to learn about those and learn some properties about those figures. So a trapezoid can be broken up into two types. Uh, there's something called an isosceles trapezoid and something called a non-isosceles trapezoid. Uh, so what exactly is a non-isosceles trapezoid? Non-isosceles trapezoid is when you have one pair of opposite sides that are parallel, and then you have um, basically two sides, which are known as the legs, and the legs are not congruent to each other. Um, so that makes it non-isosceles. Um, another fact about um, non-isosceles triangles is that our consecutive non-base angles are going to be supplementary. So that means these two angles here add up to 180. And if you think back to unit three or unit two, I believe, uh, if I have parallel lines that are cut by a transversal, then the same side interiors add up to 180. However, I can't say that these two angles add up to 180 because these two lines here, the legs, are not parallel. An isosceles trapezoid is kind of the same deal that I have um, one pair of opposite sides that are parallel to each other, but I also have one pair of opposite sides that are congruent to each other as well. Um, and so we have these parallel um, and congruent sides going on here. Um, the diagonals are congruent to each other. So if I drew in the diagonals here, uh, these two diagonals would be the same length. Um, and then the non-parallel sides, or the legs, are congruent. So that's these. These are my legs. Um, opposite angles are going to be supplementary here, meaning this angle and this angle are now going to add to 180. So that's something kind of new. We're not really used to saying opposite angles add up to 180. Um, also, because it's isosceles, if you remember from an isosceles triangle, if I have an isosceles triangle, we would say the base angles are congruent. So that's basically what we're doing. We're basically taking an isosceles triangle, and we're sort of just cutting the top of it off. And that's how we get an isosceles trapezoid. So those base angles are still going to be congruent. Um, if you remember back from the triangle unit, just to draw this back, uh, we had something called a mid-segment. And so we also have mid-segments of trapezoids. Um, and the mid-segment of a trapezoid just connects the midpoints um, of the legs. And so if I had an isosceles trapezoid, let's just say that looked like this, and I connected a mid-segment here, A, B, C, D, we'll call that E, F, um, I could say that E, F is equal to AB plus CD divided by 2. So you basically add the two bases together and then divide it by 2. And that's how you figure out what the length of the mid-segment is. Um, a kite. So we're going to look at uh, some properties of kites here. A uh, kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides <coughs> and two opposite sides that are not congruent. So if you look at the figure here, these two sides here are next to each other, so they're consecutive and they're congruent. The opposite sides are not congruent. So we have two pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent, and then um, sort of our opposite sides that are not. Um, if a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular, and so if I were to draw in the diagonals of a kite, I could say that they meet at a 90 degree angle. Um, the pair of angles where the non-congruent sides meet, um, that pair is congruent. <coughs> um, so the uh, non-congruent sides, I'll use this model as an example, these are my non-congruent sides. And so the angle where the non-congruent sides meet these two angles here and here would be congruent to each other. Um, one diagonal is a perpendicular bisector of the other. Um, and I'll kind of use this one again as my example, that if I draw the diagonals in, 
that this big long one is a perpendicular bisector of the shorter one. So it cuts it in half because it's a bisector and it also meets at a 90 degree angle. And then finally, one of the diagonals acts as an angle bisector and that is the one that is also acting as the perpendicular bisector. So not only is it cutting this line in half, it's also cutting these angles here in half. So I know that these two pieces would be equal and these two pieces would be equal. So those are our properties of kites. So let's take a look at some problems here dealing with trapezoids and kites. Uh, so for this first problem we have if AB is equal to 2x plus 3 and BC is equal to x plus 4. We have CD is equal to 2x minus 1 and AD is equal to 3x minus y. Now we have to solve for x and y. So here we're going to start by solving for x because both of those sides are equal. I can't really start here because I don't know what y is. So we actually have to solve for x first, substitute in, and then solve for y. Um, so for this problem, we're going to say that 2x plus 3 is equal to x plus 4. Subtract x from both sides, subtract 3 from both sides. We get x is equal to 1. So now I can say that these two things are equal to each other. 3x minus y is equal to 2x minus 1. And I know x equals 1, so I can substitute that in. So 3 times 1 minus y equals 2 times 1 minus y, which gives me 3 minus y equals 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is just 1. Subtract 3 from both sides, we get negative y equals negative 2. And then when I divide both sides by that negative, I get y is equal to 2. Uh, looking at the next one, it says if AC is equal to 12, so that's this, um, and CD is equal to 10, that's this, find DE. So I actually did forget to draw this in, so go ahead and draw that diagonal. We're going to call the point where they meet. E. So we're trying to solve for DE here. So we know that from A to C that that distance there is 12. So what we need to remember is that this long uh, diagonal acts as a perpendicular bisector. So we know that it meets at a 90 degree angle and it gets cut in half. So that if this piece here is 12, E to C is going to equal 6. So we know all these angles are right. We know that these two pieces are 6. And so we're asked to find what DE is. So we're asked to find from here to here. And so we're actually kind of just looking at this part of the kite. We know this is 6. We know this is 10. We're trying to solve for x. That's good old Pythagorean theorem. So we have, um, whoops. We have 10 squared equals x squared plus 6 squared. That's 100 plus 36. So we get x squared equals 64. Square root of both sides, we get x is equal to 8. So that would be the length of DE. And finally, let's take a look at some trapezoid problems. <clears throat> um, so use isosceles trapezoid. So that's important that we know it's isosceles. Um, with A, B, and C, D as the bases, <coughs> um, and F, or I'm sorry, E, F is a median. Um, remember, median means that it cuts each of these in half, so we know that these are midpoints, so we know that that's a mid-segment. Um, and we want to answer the following questions. So if D, C is 42, and A, B is 30, we want to find E, F. So this is that mid-segment situation. So we're going to say that E, F is equal to 42 plus 30 divided by 2. Add the bases together, divide by 2. Um, when we add that together, we get 72 divided by 2, which is equal to 36. So EF is 36. Uh, for the next problem, we're told if angle A is equal to 5x and angle C is equal to 4x, find the value of x. So on this problem here, we know this is 4x. We know this is 5x. One of the properties about uh, isosceles trapezoids is that the opposite angles are supplementary. 
So that means that these two angles here are going to add up to 180. So we get 9x equals 180. Divide both sides by 9 and we get x equals 20. And finally, our last problem here that we'll do together. Um, if EF is equal to x plus 5 and AB is equal to 2x plus 1, And then we have that DC is equal to 2x plus 5. They want us to find the value of EF. So this, again, is that mid-segment. A little bit more difficult this time because we don't actually have the numbers and we're kind of just using uh, the expressions here. Uh, so once again, we kind of say that EF equals 2x plus 1 plus 2x plus 5. All of that divided by 2. And so there's two ways you can do this problem. You can start by simplifying all of this and then dividing each term by two, the x's and the whole numbers. Or if you want, I think kind of what we're used to doing is to say, hey, we want to get rid of this two, so let's multiply both sides by two. So when we multiply both sides by two, it gets it out of the denominator. And now we sort of have this instead, two parentheses x plus five equals 2x plus 1 plus 2x plus 5. And now we can simplify and solve. So I'll distribute. Um, and that gives me, whoops, 2x plus 10. Over here, 2x plus 2x is 4x. Uh, 1 plus 5 is 6. And now let's just solve for x. Um, so subtract 2x from both sides, subtract 6 from both sides. That gives me 2x equals 4. Divide by 2, you get x equals 2. Problem wants us to find what EF is, so 2 plus 5 equals 7. All right, next couple problems here are ones that you just need to try out on your own using a kite. Thank you for watching.